Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, oh Lord, hallelujah, my Lord, hallelujah. Walking and talking with my mind, stayed on Jesus. Well, I'm walking and talking with my mind, my mind, Lord, stayed on Jesus. Well, I'm and talking with my mind, stayed on Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, my Lord, hallelujah, oh come let us make, oh come let us sing unto the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Amen. I read to you the 95th chapter of Psalm verses 1 and 2. Amen. Amen. We'll just have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for another Sunday. Thank you for another week that we've been able to get through with your help. Lead us, O oh Lord, and guide us in the way you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, bless this church and our pastor that we might be able to present your word in your way. Yes, it's in that Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory, glory. Oh. Mission Sunday. We had great uh, singers and speakers. We just had a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord, and we had a great musician and all that kind of stuff. And this morning, you end up with Reverend Kason singing. Lord have mercy. But we got to carry on. We, we are going to. We must.
This is what happens. If we're only faithful when we have a house full of people and we got a good, great musician and a great drummer and a great this and a great that, then we're not faithful at all. We have to be committed to God through thick and thin, through rain and shine. We have to do what God has called us to do. Yesterday we started our um, uh, summer music on the lawn. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night, we did our teaching on transformation, um, the tra getting ready for the transformation weekend, telling people about the Lord, and showing them uh, what God was, uh, has been doing and what God is going to do in their lives when they open their hearts and minds to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I am taking pictures, uh, not only with my camera, but with my mind, because I expect that the day will come when the pandemic will be passed Hallelujah. Have you read that in the Bible? And it came to pass? Yeah, yeah that's why it came. It came to pass. It didn't come to stay. It's yeah. going to pass. And so I want to compare those pictures with what things will look like in the future. I want to remind you, yeah. stay healthy. Amen. Get the vaccine. Yeah. I was in a temporary debate a couple of days ago with a um, preacher pastor that I know um, pretty well. And he was saying that, you know, we don't know what's in the vaccine. Uh, that's why people shouldn't take it. People take, some people have taken the vaccine and still got sick and uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> well, my response to that is, I got a cell phone and I use it all the time and I don't know what's in it. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Every now and again, if I get a headache, I take Tylenol. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what's in Tylenol. I don't know what's in ibuprofen. But I do know this, I, I, I can listen, I can hear, and I'm reading that, that the reports are that the people who take the vaccine are neither in the hospital, infected, or dying. I want to be with that group. I want to be in the, in the number of them that are not infected. I'm not infected. I'm not in the hospital. See, I'm at, I'm at Mount Zion Church. And I am not dying. I'm not dead. I encourage you, take the vaccine. I know your relatives are saying that they're not going to take it. And in, Do you want to lose them? I was talking to my grandson, who's giving me all this stuff about, you know, they're putting, uh, what is that thing, some trackers, um, microbes or whatever, in the vaccine so they can track us. I said, well, where are you going that they can't know about? <laughs> what difference does it make if they're tracking you? I told him the, the important thing is that you are here because if something happened to you, I ain't going to be no more good. I'm, I'm going to want to go too. I love you that much. So I want you to encourage your friends and family. Take the vaccine. Wear your mask. Use hand sanitizer. Do everything that you can to avoid being infected. Yeah. Amen. The day will come I don't know when, but the day will come when the pandemic will be over. And when that happens, I really believe this. That prophecy that was given 37, 38 years ago by David Wilkerson, he said that after this thing is over, that people will come streaming to the Lord in large numbers. The church is going to come back together and start praying like it's never prayed before. And that's going to usher in the third great awakening. And I want to be awakening means a revival, a worldwide revival. People from everywhere will feel the presence of the Lord and they'll go seeking the Lord. And I want to be here when that happens. I, when I say be here, I mean I want to be alive when it happens. I've been praying for it. I have been fasting for it. Yes, I've been fasting for it. I got a list of seven things that I'm asking God to do. And the, number one is the growth and development of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Yeah. That's what I'm fasting for. That's what I'm praying for. I want you to be praying with me. All right? So now, we don't have a whole lot of things that, that we're going to do because our music people are not here this morning. And that happens. Listen, listen. This is what you got to get ready for. <clears throat> you're not going to always have everything you want to do what you need to do. What you're going to have to do is work with what you've got. I just preached. You don't know it. I just preached. You got to work with what you got. 
if you're looking for A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and they don't show up, then what do you do? You got to work with what you got. You got to work with what you got. We got a fantastic preacher with us this morning, uh, the Reverend Dr. Thea L. Williamson, who is the moderator of his district association and pastor of the Community Baptist Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And he's coming to tell the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, when he was here last time, he led us in a, a, a long meter hymn. I, I don't know, Reverend, if you feel like it, would you kind of do that, a little bit of that? All right? Okay. All right. Thank you, Deacon. Come on, put that microphone up here. Amen. Uh, remember now, uh, we started music on the lawn yesterday. We're going to do it again uh, Sunday, not Sunday, but Saturday. We'll be going uh, from 1 p.m. until 3 p.m. Invite your friends. We're going to have free food. You come and enjoy with us. All right, the next voice you'll hear will be that of the Reverend Thea L. Williamson. Amen. Amen. And the people of God said amen. amen. Come on, if you're happy and you know it, put your hands together and give God some praise. Oh, we could be better than that, and I know it's a few of us in here, but come on, tell God, thank you. Waking you up this morning, starting you on your way, closing you in your right mind, giving you, amen, reasonable portion of health and strength. Is there anybody in God's house that can tell God, thank you? Our God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. We thank amen. God again for a man, the servant, a man, the leadership of a man, this said vineyard, a man. Come on, give a man, Dr. Case on a hand, a man, my friend, my brother. Amen. How good and how pleasant it is, a man, for brethren to dwell together in unity. God, the old thou great Jehovah, as we pilgrim through this bad land, for thou art weak, but thine is mighty. Hold me, Master, in thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. God, you've been good to us. Master, you've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. So even now, Lord, at this preaching moment, Father God, I ask that you would hide self behind thine cross, where all of you would be seen and none of me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. God, we ask now that you would speak to me, speak through me, and speak for me. That these thy people will not turn a deaf ear to thy word, that they will hear, Father God, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. It's in Jesus' name. And if you would agree with that prayer, come on, put your hands together and tell God. I solicit your prayers. Amen. This morning, amen. I am on a different time frame. Amen. Right now. Amen. It's two o'clock at home. <laughs> Amen. But I'm here at the 11 o'clock hour here. We thank God again for being present. Amen. But when I woke this morning, I couldn't do anything but to tell God, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love the Lord. He Hey. Uh -huh. 
stand for the reading of God's word amen. Yes. and not for reverence of me uh -huh. but for reverence of him that sent me for yes. the prophet said that when they opened the book they all stood mm -hmm. John chapter 14 reading from two variations of the text in hopes that we can receive a complete and a concise understanding of what the word of God is saying to us. I want to pinpoint one verse this morning. John chapter 14 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. All right. Amen. King James Version reads it this way. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Mm -hmm. Amen. Temporary English version says it like this. Ask me, and I will do whatever you ask. This way the Son will bring honor to the Father. For a few moments, my brothers and my sisters, if you would allow me, I would, that we would look at this text and come up with this subject and your thought what Jesus said ask what you want hmm. what Jesus said ask what you want if you don't mind look at your neighbor if you don't mind and tell your neighbor neighbor the preacher is going to talk about what Jesus said come on give God some praise in his house My brothers and my sisters, allow me, if you would, to come to the conclusion, amen, at the offset of this message is that God is always telling us something. Yes. Y'all want to pray with me? Yes. God is always telling us something. Amen. 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 And yeah. if we would read our Bibles, we would understand that God has said a lot of things. Yeah. Amen. God has said a lot of things. It was in, yeah. amen, the uh, beginning chapter of John 14. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. Ye believe in God, believe on God has said a lot of things. Yeah. He said, amen, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe me that I am in the Father. Amen. For the very work's sake. God has said a lot of things. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, you need to understand that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, yeah. who knows where we would be. Uh -huh. Amen. In this text, and I hope you don't close your Bibles. Amen. If you would look in this passage, Christ gives some encouraging instructions about prayer. Yeah. Amen. Christ, amen, lets us know that prayer, amen, is always in order. Do I have a witness in here yeah. that knows that, yeah. amen, prayer is in order? No, oh, too quiet in here for me. I know there's somebody in here that can tell their neighbor that, amen, if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, who knows where we prayer is always in order. Here in the text, Amen. Jesus gives us a mind instruction. Yes. He says here, amen, in this one verse, amen, of verse 13, he says that now, amen, are instructions. And he spoke these words to his disciples. Yes. Amen. This is, amen, when Jesus was in the upper room. Yes. He was there in the upper room, amen, with his disciples. Uh -huh. And there, amen, his disciples, and he had gathered together, and there, Jesus lets us know. He says, whatsoever ye shall ask. Mm -hmm. 
This is right there in the text. Y'all didn't close y'all Bibles, did you? Y'all don't mind if I teach it before I preach it. It's right there in the text. He says, whatsoever. Yes. Ye shall ask. I come to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, that prayer is unlimited. Yeah, unlimited. Y'all, 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 y'all hear me in here today? Prayer is unlimited. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, I come to tell somebody that there is what we would call a perimeter of prayer. Yeah. Prayer, amen, is the key. And faith locks the door. Yeah. Prayer is unlimited. You can pray about anything. Mm -hmm. Tell your you can call on God about anything. Yeah. Yeah. We need to bring my brothers and my sisters prayer into every facet of our life. Yeah, every Some time. limit prayer to just a few, amen, areas of their life. But I come to let you know our text are not limited like that. Mm. Yeah. Read the text, it's right there. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. Somebody say right. whatsoever. Whatsoever. whatsoever, that means everything. Whatsoever, that means whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's big, whether it's small. Whatsoever. Whatsoever, yeah. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Yeah. God did not intend my brothers and my sisters for prayer to be limited. Amen. For the little measles. God says, whatever it is, a man asks me about it. Yeah. Whatever it is you need, a man, why don't you ask? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock at the door. Yes. Shall be open. Yes. My brothers and my sisters, prayer is important. Yes. Do I have a witness here? There is nothing that we need to exclude from prayer. My Lord. Y'all praying with me in here? Yeah. Amen. No matter how big or how small, amen, God will ask. I wish I had a witness. Uh -huh. So not only, not only in this text, Dr. Carrison, do we see the perimeter of prayer, but then we look and we see the prerequisite. Yeah. It's right there in the text, y'all, in that one verse. Amen, it's right there. If there is what we will call a prerequisite, because the text says, ask in my name. Yeah. Ask in my, in my name. Yeah. Yeah. Not every prayer, my brothers and my sisters, will be answered. Only those that are praying in the name of Jesus. Because mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow. Amen. Yeah. Every tongue has to come. So you also have to pray yes. in, his in his name. If you want it, amen, to be answered. Yeah. What does it mean, amen, to pray in Jesus' name? Yes, Lord. Yeah. It means a lot. Amen. More than repeating the name of Jesus yes, at the end of your prayer. It means to pray, amen, in the way and will of Jesus. Right. If we pray outside of the will of Jesus the Christ, yeah. amen, we are praying prayers God will never ask. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. If you're praying, if you're too student, amen, you got your nose in the eye. Amen. I come to let you know your prayer is not going past the ceiling. Come on, come on. James says, Amen. Ye ask and receive not. Because we ask amiss out of the will of God. If your prayers seem, my brothers and my sisters, to do no good, I come to let you know, don't blame God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. For not keeping his word. Blame yourself for not meeting. Amen. The prerequisites of prayer. All right. Do I have a witness? Amen. So not only do we see, mother, the perimeter of prayer. Yeah. Not only do we recognize deep. Amen. The prerequisite of prayer. Yeah. Thirdly, we got to look at the promise of prayer. All 
All right. For the text says, Amen, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father, Amen, will be glorified. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that four little word right there, that will I do. Yeah. Y'all see that in the text? Yeah. It's right there. It says that will yeah. I do. Yeah. We know, my brothers and my sisters, two things. Amen. About the great promise of Jesus. First thing we would see in this text, and I hope you didn't close your Bibles, is you would see the requirement. Amen. For the promise. Uh huh. For the text, the promises are wonderful, but the prerequisites must be met if the promise are to be obtained. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Uh huh. We like, Amen, the promises, but the prerequisite of in my name comes first in yeah. these prayer instructions. And not only do we see the prerequisite deep. But when you look at the text, you will understand that we see the rebuke in the promise. My Help me, Holy Ghost, in this place. The great promise rebukes us. How many blessings we do not have because we do not ask Jesus? Do I have a witness? Amen. Just because we don't fix our mouths to go to God in prayer. Amen. We are missing our blessings few and far in between. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. We shortchange ourselves when we are slack in our prayer. Do I have a witness? Yeah. So not only my brothers and my sisters do we see the perimeter of prayer. Uh -huh. Not only do we see the prerequisite of prayer. Not only Amen. Is there the promise of prayer? Uh -huh. But lastly, I want you to see in the text that there is the praise from prayer. Yeah. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Uh, the text says that the Father uh, may be glorified. Yeah. Yes. In the uh, Amen. The son. Uh, do I have a witness uh, in God's house today? Uh, Y'all may as well come on and go with me. Uh, proper praying. Uh, amen. And answer. Uh, well, honor and praise God Almighty. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, this is uh, one reason uh, why we should pray. Uh, is because it praises uh, Go to God. Do I have a witness? Somebody here wonder why the blessing to come yet is because you to a shame to lift up holy hands and tell God thank you. And I want to know today, is there anybody here that can call on the name of Jesus? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Is there anybody here? They can call on his name, his name, yeah. soothe our song, his name, cries all of our tears, oh, six of them, his name is above every name, and I'm so glad that I know what Jesus said, Jesus said in these words, and whatsoever ye ask in my name, I will do her. If anybody here, God has a prayer. If there anybody here, know that God will take care of you. If there anybody here, know God will make a way for you. Oh, sucks so all loose. There's a strange in here. But I come to tell somebody, be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will take care of you. Anybody with 
believe it today. Uh, do me one favor. Uh, I know you can't touch your neighbor, uh, but give your neighbor uh, a spiritual high five. Uh, tell your neighbor, uh, God will. Uh, God will. What he do? Uh, I said, what he do? Uh, I said, what he do? Uh, I said, what he make a way? Uh, I said, what he bring you out? Uh, I said, what he deliver? Uh, I said, what God do? Uh, shout yes! Uh, shout yes! Uh, shout yes! Yeah! Oh, no. Anybody try? Uh, Anybody try? Uh, I know he will. Uh, I know he will. What God doing? Yes. I've been through the storm and rain. Yeah. Oh, but I made it. Anybody made it today? I've had heartaches, I've had pain. Yeah. Oh, I made it. I made it. I asked the Lord to send me some help. I can't make it. By myself, somebody lift up, hold a hand, and say hallelujah. 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 Hey, hey, I made it. I've been down to my last time. Send me some help. Yeah. I can't make it by myself. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey. I made it. I made it. Do me one favor. Yeah. If you don't mind, do me one favor. Point to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, you're going to make it. Beneath his wings, you're going to make it.
They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross, and I know. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. And I know. not known as thou not heard that the everlasting God fainteth not neither is he weary there is no searching of his understanding he gives power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength you shall faint and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount upon wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed, he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form, no comeliness, has no beauty that we should desire him. Hallelujah. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed, almighty God. Amen. How we thank you and love you and praise you. Yeah. Because of your blessed promises. And the promise that if we ask anything in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you will hear us and it shall be given unto us. Yeah. Now, oh God, I pray that you bless the preach word and bless these elements that we may not Eat and drink damnation to our own souls. We ask you now to forgive us of every scintilla of sin. All the things that we've done that we should not have done and all the things that we were supposed to do that we didn't do. Forgive us right now. In Jesus' name. Make us whole and holy before you. Forever, O oh God, in the name of him who died for us at Calvary, even Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, you do show forth my death and resurrection until I come again, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself no reputation, and humbled himself under death, even the death of the cross. Yeah. Wherefore God has highly exalted him, and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I heard them sing a new song, saying, worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered, hallelujah, to open the seals and to receive the book for he was slaughtered he was slain and by his blood he has purchased
for our God, men and women, people of every language and tongue, and made us a kingdom of kings and priests. Yeah, yeah. They sang a new song. Hallelujah. And I heard them sing the song of Moses and of the Lamb, saying, Worthy art thou, O God, hallelujah, to receive praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. On that same night, the Lord Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and said unto them, This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this bread, you will show forth my death and resurrection until I come again. And then he said to them, take you, eat all of it. And he raised the cup and blessed it and said, this is my blood shed for you. I shall not drink the fruit of this vine until I drink it new in my father's kingdom. Drink you all of it. As often as you drink this wine, you show forth my death and resurrection until I come again. Hallelujah. 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 Calvary. Calvary. Calvary, Lord, Calvary, can you hear the hammering? Surely he died on Calvary, Lord, Calvary, Calvary, Lord, Calvary, Calvary. 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 to the I want to remind you that on next Sunday morning <clears throat> at 11 o'clock, as we began the morning worship, we will baptize our candidates. Amen. Be Amen. here, be on time. Uh, deaconesses, be here, be on time so that you can help the candidates get ready. Deacons, make sure that the water's in the pool and it's not freezing cold. All right? So we want to be here next Sunday morning on time. For the baptism, I think we have about six candidates uh, to baptize and uh, we held off because of the pandemic but that's going to represent a new beginning there is a place in the bible that says despise not new beginning small beginnings do not despise small beginnings i'm just so overjoyed with what god is doing when i was a little boy my mother used to order uh, seeds from I think she was getting them from Sears and Roebuck back in those days. And one summer she said to me, I'm going to show you how to, uh, uh, where we get tomatoes from. I said, we get them from the grocery store. She said, no, they don't come from the grocery store. She took me out in the backyard. She had cultivated a little plot, might have been about six feet by six feet. And she shook a seed out. And my mother took a stick and made a hole in the ground. And she put that two or three of those tomato seeds down in that ground. And she said, now Clayton, cover it up, and I did. And uh, then she said, now you put a little water in it, and I did that. And I went on back in the house, thought to myself, I don't know what mama's doing, that ain't wet. We get tomatoes from the grocery store. But about two or three weeks passed, and there was a little green thing peeking its head up out of the ground. And uh, every day that I came home from wherever I was, I'd go in the backyard and look at that little green plant. And, and, and so it was supposed to be just one, but like two or three came up. 
And after it got about, oh, six inches high, my mama said, put a stick there and tie a string around the top of it and that'll lead the thing to grow up tall rather than grow along the ground. I'm trying to tell you something. Listen, listen, listen. We, we are in that seed in the ground position. And we, got, we just got to wait until, see, listen. God did the work in the ground. <laughs> God did the work under the dirt. Hallelujah. We, we got to be faithful, remain faithful. Oh, hallelujah. When I get to praying about this church, the Lord delivers me over into the hallelujah zone. When I start, start talking to God, I'm complaining about we don't have this and we don't have that. And then the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, yeah, I sent you there at this time for this purpose because they don't have this and they don't have that. I want you to go there every Sunday morning and tell them that I'm still on the throne. Tomato plant, tomato seed under the ground. God does the work. <laughs> God does, mm, you didn't hear me. God does the work. Don't, don't you, listen, don't you uncover the ground before God. See, when the Lord gets ready for the tomato plant to come up, the Lord breaks the dirt and pushes the, the little tomato. Do you know what I've seen? I saw this with my own eyes. The shoot of a tree, just a little sprig, growing up through a concrete sidewalk. Didn't no, nobody moved the concrete slab. God told that little sprig, I'm going to make a place for you. And that little sprig just kept working until it found a crack in that concrete and came up. Come on, my God. You are the seed. In the ground. Yes. You're the spring in the concrete. <laughs> you better hold your hope and stay where you are. God has something wonderful for you. God has something miraculous for you. Hold your hope. Stand your ground. Stay where you are. Hallelujah. This thing is not going to last forever. It's going to be over after a while. And I promise God I'm not going nowhere. Right. Until somebody saying, swing down, sweet chariot, right. stop and let me ride. Right. Hallelujah. When I leave here, I'm going to meet Jesus. Yeah. I see great things that God has for us. Yeah. And if we leave where we are, the miracle is coming to 1321 Oak Street. All if you right. leave here, you're going to miss it. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. You ever gone to the bus stop to catch the bus? <laughs> And it took the bus longer than you wanted it to take to get there. And just to, when you walked off the bus, you better, you better miss your ride. Don't you miss your ride? Don't you miss your? Did you hear me? I know the preacher don't preach, but I gotta tell you, this. don't you miss your ride? He's coming to this. This is the bus stop, and he's coming right here. Don't you miss your ride? Oh, thank God for Jesus. Give him a hand. Praise God for his grace. The psalmist says, waiting, I waited. Mm. Mm. Waiting, the way it reads in the King James Version, is I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined my ear and lifted my foot out of the miry clay. But in the Hebrew, it don't say patiently. It says, waiting, I waited. <laughs> waiting, I waited. Do you know what that means? It's an intention. It's double what the meaning is. See, the word waiting is really in there. It's implied four times. First, I was waiting. And then while I was waiting, I waited. <laughs> while I was waiting, I waited. I, 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 no, no, I, I wasn't sitting around doing nothing. I was busy doing something, but I was waiting. I made up my mind that I was not the answer, and the answer I was waiting on came from somewhere else. Bless God for Jesus. Bring your friends and family for the baptism next Sunday. We got plenty of room. We just can't go over 100. We got plenty of room. The room. 
seats 425 people. We cannot have more than 100 because that pushes us too close together. All right? So you can bring up to 100, and we're going to baptize, and then we got overflow. So my deacons can take that table down, turn them chairs around so people can sit back there and witness the baptism, all right? And then next Sunday morning, if the Lord give me power, I'm going to declare the word of God between the living and the dead. I want you to stay. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Uh, 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 Lena, I get excited sometimes. <laughs> I want you to bring your offering. Hallelujah. Bring your offering. Now, now y'all go tell everybody. Rem got so excited this morning in church, he forgot to offer. <laughs> my God, my God. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for these gifts and those who gave. Bless them now through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I want you to stand now for the benediction. Um, I have to say thank you to all of you. You can Hudson, you can Priestley, you can Harris. Deacon Johnson, and all of you who helped us to keep things going. I deeply, deeply appreciate you. Mona and Penny and Gloria, all of you, Lena, all of you, all of you. It's very difficult. Most people think that the difficulty is in passing a great big church. That's not true. The difficulty is in holding on and passing a small church. Because so few people do everything. You have one or two persons that carry that wear like five or six hats. And then pastors wearing an extra hat all the time. All the time. Two and three hats. So whenever somebody's calling me and saying, Reverend, don't forget to do this, that's a blessing to me. Yeah. I don't want you to think I would have reminded him of it, but he might have thought that I was getting in this, in this business. My business is your business. Hallelujah. My, my business is your business. Your, in this church, your business is mine. We are in this together. All right. So it's a benediction for us, Pastor. That be again, thank 
Mount Zion, come on, give yourselves a hand. to the word of God. Now come on, let's bless the man of God, y'all pastor, Dr. Kason, come on. I tell my church all the time, it's a sad duck that don't pray this on time. Amen. Amen. You got a leader, amen, a visionary here in Pastor Clayton Kason. Come on, give God some praise for him. Wisdom, excuse me, prophet. So my mouth is about to stop for me. See, he forgot again. <laughs> got so much on my mind. The second son in October. Amen. Is our church's anniversary. Amen. This holiday, combined with COVID, knocked us down financially a little bit. You know that I don't worry you about money. The last time I asked you to give a large sum of money was for June of last year. The people who help us with counting and keeping up with the funds have made me aware that we've fallen right under a number that I always want us to have on hand just in case something happens. This is what I want you to do. Now, don't throw nothing at me. Everybody who will and can, by the second Sunday in October, I want you to give $1,000 or as close to it as you possibly can. Now, don't get mad with me or yourself if you don't have a thousand. If, if the most you can give is $200, give that. If the most you can give is $100, give that. All right? If you can give a thousand, give it. Why, Pastor? The winter is coming. We think we have a few people now. There will probably be fewer then because not only will people be escaping COVID, they're going to say, well, I'm staying home the way you want. So what I want to do is try to put us in a position so that when December and January and February come, I won't have to be asking you to give money. All right? Yeah. You do that for me and call your friends. And tell them that little knuckle, knucklehead guy told us to bring up a thousand dollars. Save your money. Now, somebody's gonna tell me, Reverend, I can give it, but I can't give it to the second Sunday in November. I want you to write on that envelope. Might not be able to give it to the second Sunday in, in, in December. This right here is special gift for the church anniversary. Amen. It will help us, it will bless us. And if you're out there in, what is that, Facebook land, watching me, and you want to give, I want you to call Mount Zion Baptist Church, 1321 Oak Street, leave a message that you want our special post office box number. I don't have it on me right now. And we'll fix it so you can send it there. Or there are a couple of other ways that, that you can give, and the secretary will call you and let you know how you can do it. All right? Do that for me, and you'll bless us. God bless you, Pastor. Come on, give God some praise. We thank God again for the move of His Holy Spirit. I know time has been well spent. Thank you again, Mount Zion, for the warm welcome and the show of hospitality. Amen. I'm going to tell those folk in Indiana, amen, they know how to treat people in California. Amen. Amen. It's about God, our Father, we thank you. We love you, Father God. We exalt you above all. Master, we thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you, O oh God, for the move of your Holy Spirit. Now, God, as we leave this place, but never from your tender mercy, we ask now, God, that you would rest room and abide with us. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the only wise God, both glory, dominion, and power, henceforth, now, and forever. And every child of God said, Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Don't touch them, but just look at them and say, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it.